Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Chapter 5, Radical Expressions and Equations. This video, we're going to do Section 5.1, Working with Radicals. Part 1 will be with numbers. Part 2 will be with variables. So before we begin too far into this, I just want to make a bold statement here that Chapter 5 is totally radical. I hope you will enjoy it. Let's talk about radicals and their terminology. So this whole thing altogether is a radical, and it's made up of an index, which is a little small number there, which tells you what root I'm taking. For example, square root, invisible two, cube root has a three, fourth root has a four, etc. What's underneath the root symbol is called the radicand. So in our last chapter, when we were talking about the quadratic formula, the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, that would have been our radicand. Now, a radical itself, when I evaluate it, can be rational or irrational. So here's an example of rational. Square root of 4 equals 2. Well, a rational number is an integer, terminating decimal, or a repeating decimal. So if I take the root of something and I end up with a rational number, that tells me that my radicand is perfect. Irrational numbers, something like this, for example, the square root of 2 is approximately 1.4. So irrational numbers are non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. When I get roots like that, I know that my radicands are not perfect. Let's talk about the process of going from mixed to entire radicals and why we would do each one. A mixed radical, exactly as it sounds, mixture, it's a product of integers and radicals. For example, 2 root 6. See how it's a mix? Integer radicals. Entire radicals, just like it sounds, the number is entirely under the radical. For example, square root 24. Now we need to know how to convert between the two forms and here's why. Going from mixed to an entire radical is a very useful way of comparing radicals that have the same index. Going from entire to mix is necessary for simplifying radicals, putting them in lowest terms. So let's look at the process of converting from mixed to entire. First thing I do is identify the index. What root am I taking? Write each number outside the root under the root by raising it to a power, and that power has an exponent equal to the index. Once you've done that, you just multiply your terms under the root and you're good to go. Little tip, if your radical is negative, you leave the negative outside. Changing between the two forms does not change the sign or the value. It just looks different, but it still has the same value. So as an example here, write 5 root 3 as an entire radical. Very first thing I do is identify the index. Since there is no index, remember it's an invisible 2. So since I'm taking the second root, I will raise 5 to the exponent of 2. 5 squared, 5 times 5 is 25. Then what I do with the 25 is multiply it with the 3 that's already under there. And 25 times 3, 75. So if I've done this correctly, 5 root 3 is the same as the square root of 75. Good thing we have a calculator we can check. 5 root 3, root 75, nailed it, they're equal. I really recommend checking all of your questions. So how did I enter those roots in? Let's just review. Square root you should know how to do. Square root is just second x squared. That's the square root. But if you're wanting to do something like cube root, fourth root, fifth root, here's what you do. Cube roots, you go math over to number, it's the very first option, and then option number four is cube root. So you would do math, option four, and it would take you out and do cube root. Fourth, fifth, and higher is a little bit more challenging. What you have to remember is to enter in your index first. So if I wanted to take the fourth root, I would do four, and then math over to number, and I would choose option number five. So this is x root, that means any root. So since I did four and then that, on my main screen, it would show me the fourth root. Let's try this one. 2 times the cube root of 5. So first thing I do is identify my index, which is 3. So since I cube rooted to put it back underneath, I cube it. So I cube 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, which equals 8. And with the 8, I multiply the 8 and the 5 together. 
and then I get 40. So if I've done this correctly, 2 times the cube root of 5 is the same as cube root 40. Checking on my calculator, and I can see it's a match. Okay, let's try this one. Negative 3 the fourth root of 2. Hmm, the first thing I notice is I have a negative. So my tip for you is leave the negative outside the radical. Okay, when I square rooted, I squared it to put it back under. When I cube rooted, I cubed it to put it under. Now I'm taking the fourth root. Do you guys know what it is called to raise something to the fourth power? It's not squaring, it's not cubing, it's, it's actually tesseract, which is kind of a, a fancy big name, but that's what it actually means. But we're going to keep it simple. So instead of saying tesseract, raising it to the fourth power, I'm going to say Yoda. So when I have the fourth root, I use Yoda. I use the fourth to put it back underneath there. So 3 exponent 4, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. So I'm going to take 81 and multiply it by the 2 that's already out there. Notice my negative stays on the outside. 81 times 2, 162. So let's check on the calculator. Is negative 3 fourth root of 2 the same as negative the fourth root of 162? So checking on my calculator, I see I got it correctly. So thanks for the help on that one, Yoda. Let's now do a compare and order question, which is what I said was the main reason you want to go from mixed to entire. So let's try this one. So if I have 10 root 2, so to put it underneath, I am going to square it, which is 100. So I'm going to have the root of 2 times 100, which is square root 200. Okay, 14. Now, 14 doesn't appear to have a root with it, but I can multiply 14 by 1 without changing the question. I can also multiply 14 by the square root of 1 without changing the question. So there I have my root. So to put it underneath, I'm going to square it. So I'm going to have 1 times 14 squared, which is 196. Okay. Over here, I'm going to square it, so 8 squared. So I'm going to have, oh, let me try that again. I'm making a mess. Okay, so I'm going to square it underneath. So I'm going to have the square root of 3 times 64. So that's going to be the square root of 192. And then here, 13 to the 1 half, I hope you recognize that as 14 root 13. So again, to put it underneath, I'm going to square it. So I'm going to have 16 multiplied by 13 to figure out my root. So I'm going to put that on my calculator just to help me. So I'm going to do 16 times 13, and I get 208. And then the last one's already a root. So if I want to order these, I'm going to order them from smallest to biggest. If I do that, I'm going to use my entire radicals to help me. So looking at all these roots, I see that 196 is the smallest. So that means I'm going to go to 14, which was my original, and I'll put that one first. Oh, I made a boo-boo. It's 192 that's the smallest. Let's change that around. Not a mistake if you count, catch it yourself, right? Okay, so 192 and then 196. And then I'm going to go to 200, which is 10 root 2. And then 202. And then last but not least, root 208, which is this one here. And there I have them all in order from small to big. Now let's look at doing the other process, going from entire to mixed. This is also called simplifying. You have to simplify every final answer that you have, unless, of course, I'm asking you to write it as an entire radical. So the way that we do this is we identify the index. That's the root we're taking. Look for the highest perfect square factor, cube factor, whatever the index is for that radicand. Then you're going to factor the radicand, perfect factor times non-perfect factor. And then you can simplify by taking that root of the perfect factor. Now remember, radicals must always be simplified. So to help you with finding your perfect factors, here's how you can do it on your calculator. 
If I want to know perfect squares, in y1 I put x squared. Perfect cubes, x cubed. Perfect quartics, x exponent 4, x exponent 5, and so on. Okay, so you can see in y1 I have perfect squares, in y2 perfect cubes. For simplicity, we'll call these perfect quartics and perfect quintics. Now tied to that, my x value is the roots. So of the blue numbers, x is the square root. For the red numbers, x is the cube root. For the green numbers, x is the fourth root. And for the pink numbers, x is the fifth root. So that can help you when you're trying to find the factors if you're stuck. So let's try this one here. Negative the root of 98. Again, remember, let's leave the negative outside the radical. So negative root 98, I'm going to break it into my perfect factors and my non-perfect factors. So to help you, here I have a list of all your perfect squares. So I scan the list and see which one is a perfect factor of 98, and I see 49 is. So I know that this will be the square root of 49 multiplied by the square root of 2. So square root of 49 is 7, don't forget the negative. So the answer should be 7 root 2. So to do that, I'm going to put this into the calculator just to check to see if I did it right. And there we are, negative root 98 is in fact the same as negative 7 root 2. Okay, let's try cube root. So no negative in front to worry about. I'm just going to break it into perfect and non-perfect factors. Here's my perfect cubes to help me. So looking at the list there, I see that 27 goes into 54. So I will write this as 27 times 2. The cube root of 27 is 3. So that's 3 cube root 2. And I'm going to put brackets around my answer. So anytime I have an index other than square root, which has no index, I always put brackets so you don't think I wrote 3 cubed times the square root of 2. So I would recommend you guys do that as well. So brackets around it if it has an index other than 2. Checking on my calculator, I can see that I did that correctly. Always a good idea to check. Okay, let's try a fourth root. So since I'm looking at fourth root, there's my perfect exponent fours, my perfect quintics, quartics, sorry, quintic is five. So let's break it down into my perfect and non-perfect factors. So scanning my list, I see that 16 goes into 32. So I know that this will be 16 multiplied by two. Now, the fourth root of 16 is two, and I'm gonna use brackets because my index is not a two times the fourth root of two. Okay, so looking at this, I'm gonna put it into my calculator to see if I did that correctly. And you can see fourth root of 32 is in fact the same as two times the fourth root of two, so you know you did it correctly. Now, this process of simplifying the radicals is also used when you add and subtract like radicals. Now, radicals with the same radicand and the same index are like, for example, square root two and square root two, same radical, same index. Now, you can add or subtract radicals that have the same index and the same radicand simply by adding the numbers in front. It's kind of like working with variables. So you simplify the radical by removing all your perfect factors, and then you combine like terms, not the radicals. So I want you to treat it like variables. The square root of 3 plus 5 root 3. Well, I have 1 root 3. I add on 5 more. Altogether, I have 6 root 3s. I don't have 6 root 6. So you don't add the radicals. You add the numbers in front. So we're going to try two questions. Let's try this one here. Root 50 times, or sorry, plus 3 times 2 to the 1 half. Now we've seen that notation, but just to refresh your memory, exponent of 1 half means square root. Okay, so let's break it into our perfect and non-perfect factors for square root 50. So if you need to, you can look at your perfect squares and find the one that it goes into. And hopefully you can see that that is 25. So 25 times 2 is 50, so root 25 times root 2 is the same as root 50. And this is 5 root 2 added to 3 root 2. So if I have 5 root 2s and I add on 3 more root 2s, 
all together I will have eight root twos. So let's go into our calculator and see if that works. So looking at my calculator, the root of 50 plus three root two is the same as eight root two. So I know I did that correctly. So let's just end with a subtracting question, okay? So we'll look at the square root of 96, take away the square root of 24. So first thing that I want to do is write each of these as perfect and non-perfect factors. So I'll use my calculator, there's my perfect squares to help me, to break each one down. So scanning the list for 96, I see that 16 goes in there. Let's try that again. 16 times 6. And then scanning the list for 24, I see that 4 goes in there. So 4 times 6. So always write perfect factor first. So the square root of 16 is 4. That's 4 root 6. Subtract so square root of 4 is 2 and root 6. So since they are both root 6s, I can simplify. So if I have 4 root 6s, and I take away two root sixes, I will be left with two root six. So I'll be left with two root six. So let's check that on our calculator to see if we are correct. And you can see root 96 take away root 24 is in fact the same as two root six. I thought this cartoon was really cute. Your mama thinks square roots are vegetables. True, true, they are square. Square roots are vegetables, but they're also, as you've seen in this lesson, um, numbers. So practice questions one to four in my notes, detailed solutions on D2L, and then you can move on to the textbook question. So again, this is part one of 5.1. Part two will be with variables. So I hope this video helped, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.